Bonjour or hello. I'm Max from Out of Spec Guide and I happen to be in Paris today, not on business, uh, this is just a family trip. But um, while I'm here this week, I figured I would show you something really cool I just saw. It's curbside charging for electric cars. You're gonna recognize behind me, there's some electric cars you probably aren't even familiar with. They're in the European market. So I'll talk a little bit about that, some EV spotting in Europe, but I wanna mainly discuss today what the role of these curbside chargers is, how they're important for cities, uh, and what's going on with them. Because really, if we want electric cars in cities, I feel like we're gonna need a lot more of these. So let's get into it. So these are Belieb curbside chargers. Basically, this company operates both fast charging and uh, curbside level two charging in Europe. So level two charging over basically alternating current. This is the kind of charging in the US you might see in your home garage or at a charge point stall or a Clipper Creek unit at a business. But the unique thing in Europe here is that they use 220 volt. Uh, and also three-phase power. Three-phase power is available in a lot of places, and even when it's not, because they're using 220 volt, they can drive more power to electric cars. So there's no such thing as what we in the US call level one charging. That kind of you know wall outlet socket that we use in the US where it might take days to charge your car, they don't have that in Europe. And in France, their connector um, you know, supports actually nominally, I think like 230 volts. So basically they're always getting typically seven kilowatts or more if they have three-phase power, they're actually getting 22 kilowatts of charging speed into their vehicles, which is super cool. Um, so that's, that's just something I wanted to note about the European market that's unique. Another thing is these curbside chargers here installed are obviously meant to basically make city life easier. This one is, as you can see, in a busy kind of zone. I believe we're in the 9th arrondissement of Paris, but um, these are everywhere in the city and uh, they're partially government funded, but Belieb is a private company. And the way they operate, you actually bring your own cable. And this is fairly common in Europe. So you can see here, if I open this, or I can't open that yet, but um, you have to activate the unit uh, with a contactless card, bank card, or their own membership card, or a roaming card from another charging partner. But anyhow, uh, once you actually use them, you can either basically plug into um, the socket here, which is a type 2 connector. It's similar to what we use J1772 in the US, but it's Europe spin on it. Um, and so it's also part of their CCS, their start charging standard. You may be familiar with the Tesla charging standard we're all switching to in the US, North American charging standard. This doesn't exist in Europe. Instead, they use... Uh, Type 2 CCS. I'll flash a picture of that on screen. You can see what the unit by itself looks like without the DC fast charging pins, but imagine some DC pins there and then you have CCS Type 2. Anyhow, that's a technical explanation, but what's going on here is super interesting. So people bring their own cables from their car because most cars come with them uh, or you buy one. Aftermarket, they're fairly cheap. The actual charging hardware is on board, just like AC charging in the US, but Unlike uh, in the US where you know we use a cable typically provided by the station, here everyone brings their own cable, which I think makes sense, honestly. Uh, keeps the cost of these units lower, lets them install more of them, lets people how ch charge however they may wish to charge. So here you can see there's a DS7 charging. I wasn't even familiar with them, but DS is basically a luxury mark of Citroën, also owned by the Stellantis Group. So basically it's a Euro exclusive. We don't get this in the US, but uh, this is an electric crossover um, SUV type thing. And uh, you can also see that someone's charging their electric moped here. So there's a lot of flexibility with these stations. You can really charge anything. Of course, they've supplied their own charger there. Um, so these units are paid. However, they are subsidized by the government, which makes them a little bit cheaper. And um, they are, I'll flash the prices on screen for what they cost in Paris. It's actually fairly reasonable considering it's a city and electricity rates. So there's several uses here. The most immediate is ride sharing. There's actually other companies that have their own versions of these chargers that are only available for ride sharing. So for people who like to do that, they can basically uh, charge their ride share cars, uh, which is really neat. But these are for personal vehicles as well. So these Belib ones. So here you can see there's also the Citroen, oh sorry, Peugeot 2008 charging. Um, so that's just a very kind of popular uh, crossover here. I believe this is the fully electric one uh, or yeah, it's fully electric. Uh, we've got a Renault Clio hybrid there, but that's not actually charging because it's a hybrid, it doesn't plug in. Uh, but anyhow, this is an interesting fleet vehicle here, Kangoo. Uh, one interesting thing about curbside chargers, good thing they brought their own cable and it's long enough, but you can see, right, because the um, charge port's in the front and the street is one way, they had to do an interesting 
um, interesting a parking arrangement to actually fit in here. So that's one issue with curbside charging is, you know, in any country, we can't seem to agree on which end of the vehicle, which side of the vehicle will put the charging port on, no matter which world market you're talking about. So, you know, having long enough cables in case you need to stretch is a possibility. But anyhow, I think these make so much sense and I'm really excited to see them. So let me flip the camera around and let me talk a little bit more about how this works and where I think it might apply to our cities as well. So in terms of billing, they have it figured out pretty well. You can imagine, right, it's a city dense congestion. Is this integrated with parking? The answer is yes, it is. So these units will charge per the kilowatt hour. Uh, the rates depend. They have like an annual subscription. If you're a resident, you get discounted rates off peak basically at night uh, when the grid is being used less. Uh, then you can also get discounted rates. But um, it's about 35 cents each a kilowatt hour if you're using any of these um, alternating current level two stalls. If you use their fast chargers, which in Paris, I think they only seem to be about 50 kilowatts. Uh, they support CCS type two and Chatamo because there's a lot of Leafs here uh, and Renault Zoe's, which are Renault's version of the Leaf. But anyhow, um, fast chargers are a little more expensive. They're actually like two, I believe they're two euros a kilowatt hour. They're pretty expensive. But if you use these, it makes a lot more sense. Then you're also paying about 10 to 15 cents an hour um, just for the parking. And then after 14 hours, they start to bill you a flat rate, 10 euros an hour for parking. So at that point, then you're paying a lot more for parking. But for 14 hours of charging, um, even on these seven kilowatt units, you can get a lot. And on the three phase units providing 22 kilowatts, of speed that's really going to charge most vehicles within most European electric vehicles within like three to four hours because um, most people aren't showing up that empty. You live city life, you drive short distances, whether you're a, um, you know, a fleet driver, you're delivering, or you just happen to be driving in Paris, you probably aren't driving very far. You probably aren't uh, driving your battery down that much. So do you, these just help you top up and they integrate the payment for parking and everything. They make sense for both fleet drivers and like I said, residents. These are in some residential neighborhoods in Paris. We see them everywhere. Um, so how can this apply to the US? Well, I think this is super interesting. I've, there's actually, you know, things going on in New York City. Uh, Flow Chargers has some curbside units set up. I'm not sure if that's residential. It seems to be more of like a amenity type thing. But I think honestly, for cities like New York, like DC in the US, um, you know, San Francisco, a lot of these cities are going to require curbside charging because most people don't have garages. They don't have a way to really easily have chargers. And uh, if you're some people I know, like uh, I have family who live in the Bay Area of California, they drive actually, they have a plug in hybrid, but they put a level one outlet across the street. It stretches across the sidewalk and it just plugs into their car. It's a little janky and it works. However, through a telephone pole, basically just across from their house under the street. The legality of that's dubious. Some cities like Washington DC are actually um, trying to promote programs for that. So you could install on the curb a basic charger, but we're not seeing that uh, really nationwide yet. I think we're gonna need it for cities because let's be honest, the convenience of electric cars vastly diminished when you have to visit a fast charger, especially in the city when everyone's depending on those high congestion. We've already seen it with Tesla superchargers in the Bay Area or the West Coast of the United States uh, where there's you know high EV adoption. They're getting congested quickly. I mean, I don't know, uh, between you and me and, and Paris, I don't know as well how much the utilization is, but I have seen most of these seem pretty busy. I've seen, you know, Mini Cooper Electrics, the Renault Zoe's, Nissan Leafs, all kinds of vehicles just plugged in here to charge. And I believe they charge here for several hours while they're also parked. Uh, and it's also, again, how fleets manage their vehicles. So people use car sharing services a lot um, in many cities around the world. And if you use a car sharing service for electric cars, this actually makes life easier because they never have to visit a gas station. Uh, just like they never have to visit a fast charger. These could be integrated into retail, into residential neighborhoods. As you can see, they have a pretty low profile. It doesn't really take that much from the curb space. So basically, long story short, I think private companies are gonna figure this out in the US. I hope cities and municipalities and local governments help them. Maybe there's some subsidy programs or maybe there's just laws that make it easier to build more of these because I think it's really important. And um, in the spirit of you know individualism, let, let people, uh, who have houses in the city, like townhomes and stuff, uh, who don't have garages, install in their designated curb space their own chargers if they want to. Um, this infrastructure isn't vastly difficult because this kind of infrastructure is so much easier to install than DC fast charging. Cost for that, especially once you go into the 150 or 350 kilowatt speeds, you're looking at you know tens of thousands of dollars. This equipment, 
a few thousand dollars. It's certainly a cost, but nothing that I think uh, some interesting startups couldn't afford or of course uh, willing residents who you know are doing well and have their own electric car and decide to do that. As we're early adopters, these are the issues we're facing now. And I think to mainstream it, we need it. So I hope I haven't banged on too long in this video. But if you have thoughts, if you were a resident of the EU or you live in France, actually, please let me know what you think of these. Have you used Believe or units like them? Um, what has your experience been? Uh, if you're just a city dweller in general, what are your thoughts on how we use electric cars in cities, um, how owners use them, how fleet, uh, fleet vehicles and ride sharing uh, might utilize it. I think it's a super interesting conversation to have. We have to address this so often on this channel. We talk about road trips, home ownership, targeted generally towards those of you living in the suburbs. I know that's a lot of the population in the US, but it's not everyone. And around the world in particular, so many people live in cities. We need to start thinking about this stuff. So please write in your feedback and what you've seen in the comments. I do want to hear from those of you who do live in cities, especially if you're in Europe. And thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. I've been Max with that spec guide.